We have a very unique setup. Putting 10 young athletes together. Just out in the middle of nowhere. It's a one track mindset. You know, wake up, eat, sleep, run. Everybody at Zap has the goal of becoming an Olympian. There's a lot that has to go right. But we're gonna do everything we can to get someone to the Olympics in Tokyo. down the mountain, headed to Grandma's Marathon in Duluth, Minnesota. I've uh, got four Zap athletes racing. Josh Azuski is running, and Joe Stillen is running, uh, Joanna Thompson, and Andrew Colley. By and large, they've been really good build-ups, and they've all been training together, working off each other, and uh, looking to kick some ass this weekend. Time goal for this race, Two hours, 11 minutes, 30 seconds, which is what you have to run to be eligible to go to the Olympics. The Olympic trials are in February, eight months from now, but even if you win the Olympic trials, you have to have the Olympic standard, which for the guys is 2.11.30, and for the women is 2.29.30. It'll be a pretty big challenge. I actually woke up kind of like and immediately thought about the race today and kind of got a little spike in heart rate. So those things are good, I think. We've had about a nine week build up for this. That's included some 25 mile runs, um, a lot of big workouts. So I'm ready to, to see that pay off. The I guess unofficial Zap slogan is the mind is the athlete. It's all about what you're thinking, how you're approaching the race, your attitude, your confidence and swagger going into the race. If you don't have that, then it doesn't matter how fit you are. You can go down the bike path, get in five to six by 30 seconds, full rest post. IT band and this is it's just some really light knuckle compressions. Uh, it just helps the tissue open up a little bit. And I, I talk to the tissue, sometimes that helps. This is just your typical deep south sweet tea. <laughs> and then I add a little salt for electrolytes and it's a perfect thing to have during a race because I actually enjoy sweet tea a lot so getting to have it during a race is nice. Two years ago I was probably in the darkest place I've ever been in in my life. I had been injured for basically three years up until that point. Couldn't stay healthy for more than a couple months at a time. He was like, hey, we need to figure this out and see what's wrong with you. I went to get my arteries checked. We got the test results back and I had pretty much full blockage in both, both legs behind the knees. Got the surgery and it's kind of been a cool process ever since then. We took it back slowly, but I've never felt so strong, so I'm really excited to show people what we've been able to accomplish over the past 12 weeks. Just do what you guys have been doing. Go execute your plan of that first 10 to 15 minutes being an extension of your warm up, and then dial into your rhythm. And then after you get past 30K, there's no, there's no coaching. Just go race. Go beat people. Uh, a couple other quick reminders. Run with people. You know, you'll waste less energy by running with people and that you can just pull off their energy. Josh, coming around fitter than you know. Joanna, if you execute the first four to five miles as you should, you will run really well tomorrow.
period. And Andrew, I have said this to you a dozen times, but I'm gonna say it again. You were dead in the water two years ago with injuries, so tomorrow is a celebration. That's, that's the way I look at it. And Joe, I really believe like you hit a reset button on your career last summer after track nationals, and it's been just inspiring to watch. So let's rock it out, all right? Thanks. It's a 26 mile drive out to the starting line. We're gonna see if we can get to a few spots during the race to uh, cheer the crew on. And our first stop is gonna be the five mile mark. They start in uh, eight minutes. If they're doing their job, they'll be here in about 33 minutes and 20 seconds for the men. And Joanna about five minutes behind them. So here comes your 43rd annual Grandma's Marathon. One thing as a runner that you need to do is get to the start line with no doubts in the back of your mind based around what you've done or what you didn't do. It's gotta just be, I've done this, I've rehearsed it, I'm ready to go. at five miles, uh, but they all look good. This is what they live for these days. Yeah, they're almost here. has this inexhaustible well of positivity. All right, Joanna, dial into a good rhythm. And he really projects that to his athletes. Uh, we're gonna, gonna go now from miles nine to 16. We'll just make it. All of them seem to be executing well in the early stages. I say that even nine or 10 miles into the race because in a marathon, it's the last 10 that really matters. So interestingly enough, the spot we're going to now, is roughly mile 16, is about that point, the, the point at which really the race begins. up to what's in front of you! All right, Joe. Okay, Joe. You all right, Josh? Well, I'm sorry about the IT. That's all right. Unfortunately, Josh was forced to drop out his IT band really lit up on him. Every step from about three minutes in, just pain in my up my whole side of my leg here. Andrew looks quite good. I think he's either in fourth or fifth place now. If I'm being honest, Joe, Joe looked pretty rough. All right, I'm gonna get down to the course here. The leader is still a couple of minutes ahead of everybody, but Andrew has worked himself now into second place. There's Andrew. He was on 211.35 pace at 20. When I'm racing well, it's like no other feeling in the world. Where you're just running and not thinking and everything's just kind of flowing along. Keep coming! All the way! All the way! He looks good. 
He looks better than the leader. <laughs> got an update. He's got a mile to run right now. He's in second place. You finished second. 212 15. Step in the right direction, but let's say a B plus. He's gotta be pleased with that. Of course he's gonna be a little disappointed in not running the Olympic standard, but he's just getting started on his career. Yeah. Excited to move forward. It's time to get back to work. I'm almost certain that Joanna must have dropped out because unless she's walking, she would have been here by now. Tigers, that are living in North Carolina, and he crosses the finish line with his. I knew the, the big, big goal was out of sight. The PR was out of sight by mile 15 or 16. So at that point, the goal was just to finish. And I ran like 219 something. It's a lot slower than we wanted to run, but it's still under 220, you know. So. So during the race today, I felt really, really good aerobically, um, but then at about mile 14, my back started tightening up and ended up dropping out at mile 20 with back spasms. So yeah, it kind of sucked. <laughs> Second place with the time of 2.12.15, Andrew Colley. I wanted to run that to 11.30, and I feel like I was fit enough to run faster than that. So that's why I'm a little disappointed. Still gotta come away with some positives and keep the experience as like a step to greater things. I'm really happy for Andrew. <laughs> that guy deserves a break. Um, this was really cool to see. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit emotional. Uh, he's, he's been through the ringer. Getting to see what he can do with a solid, healthy training block is pretty incredible. Well, my first takeaway is we just had a guy finish second at the Grandma's Marathon. Yeah. I mean, I know that it's probably 1% of him is thinking, because I don't know if you guys know this, he was on 211.35 pace until a mile and a half to go. But it's still a victory. Yeah. And Josh seemingly looked very relaxed at running 211 pace for 16 miles. Yeah. So, like, I still view those as victories, right. you know? Um, but yeah. I'd be lying if I didn't say, for someone like JoJo who's had the best training she's had since she's been at Zap, I'm disappointed for you, not in you. Right. Yeah. There's more races to run in the fall. The training doesn't go away. And that's not just lip service, but that's true. Pete's like, well, what do you want to do this fall? And I said, honestly, I think I want to run another marathon. Yeah, I'm gearing up for Chicago. Berlin. New York City. Two weeks ago, we got a new addition to the team. I know that I can be one of the top marathoners in the country. I'm trying to help her adjust to Pete's training. Inverse band strap flexor dexers, frozen. We want to put someone on the Olympic team for Tokyo. But just making it to the starting line can be really hard. Well, not only can I not walk right now, in February 2020, I have to run the best marathon of my entire life.